You know, I know on, on paper, uh, a lot of people thought that Maine was, was the favorite by X amount of points. And some people thought we should be the favorite because we're FBS and they're an F FCS team. But uh, I think I knew too, way too much. And uh, I knew from the uh, s looking at their, their film, looking at their roster, looking at their size, uh, it, was, it was a pretty even matchup. I couldn't tell very much from the Norfolk State game that, that they just overpowered them. So I really couldn't, it was hard to get a, a feeling of how good Maine would be this year. But I knew that we would have our hands full. Uh, the quarterback is awfully efficient. Uh, he plays so much better than his skill set. Uh, great decision maker. Puts the ball uh, where it needs to be. And uh, we just had our hands full with him. And, uh, of course, on critical downs, we would stop him on, especially in the first half, we would get stops on first and second down, and then on third down he would make a play. Uh, how he would, he just he just would. He found an open guy and uh, really, really, uh, really, really hurt us. As far as uh, uh, special teams, obviously, the uh, fumble early in the game, giving them the short field, uh, we're just not good enough of a football team to overcome that. And then offensively, uh, in the first half, I had a plan. I wanted to uh, – I felt good about A.J. the last couple of weeks. He's uh, picked up his, his, uh, his deal in practice. But nevertheless, uh, I wanted to make sure that Mike had every opportunity. He certainly had earned the starting job and wanted to make sure that um, he had a chance to uh, put the, have a chance to win the football game. Uh, when we got to halftime, I could see that there was just that uh, we needed some help. We needed to do something different to get the offense going. And uh, I decided to make the change and put A.J. Doyle in at quarterback. Can't tell you that that's a permanent move. Uh, I can just tell you that it was a move that I made at the half and it was the right move to make. Um, I, his numbers were no better than Mike's, uh, you know. So his point production was no better than Mike's. So uh, I'll have a I'll have a hard week of practice uh, trying to figure out which which direction to go. Uh, offensively, we just can't sustain drives. Um, long, you know, we just can't. We had way way too many three and outs there uh, in the first and second quarter, and uh, our defense just couldn't get a rest. And uh, it certainly took its toll on us. And uh, hats off to Maine. Uh, they played a very good football game, almost error-free, and uh, certainly that made a big difference. With that, I'm open for questions. Charlie, you were so optimistic in the preseason about this team being, being so much better than they were a year ago. What, what's disappointed you? What, what hasn't gone the way you thought it would? Well, I, I think uh, from an offensive perspective is this. Uh, we're, we're not able to sustain drives because we're not able to uh, do, do simple pitch, pitch and catch uh, that we're capable of doing it. Uh, I'm not, we're not tar trying to run the Patriots offense. Uh, we're not trying to ask the guy to throw the ball 40 yards downfield in tight windows. Just things that we do day in and day out in practice. Uh, for whatever reason, we're not getting them done in the game. Sometimes it's on the quarterback. We have, uh, there's, a, there's a, a litany of things that went wrong today. You know, we have an open guy and we get a ball knocked down by a defensive end. You know, just things that don't happen in practice, things you can't account for, they just happen. We have an offensive lineman. For the, maybe the first time all year in the, in the first game and two games, uh, uh, just stepped the wrong way in pass protection, and the guy at the defensive end just flies. He's in the quarterback space. We have a uh, a play set up. Should be a touchdown. We have two of them, and we we miss the throw. Uh, the post to Tajay, uh, then then also uh, very very similar play to Beck earlier uh, earlier in the half. Uh, we have another play set up. And uh, the guys run the play. He knows it's his touchdown. Can't tell you it's going to be a touchdown, but it's going to be a big play. And he runs the wrong route. Why? I can't tell you why. He's the only guy who ever catches the ball, and he knows it's his play and uh, does the wrong thing. Uh, we don't have many of those, but we have just enough, just enough at critical junctures in the football game, and it uh, hurts us. And then defensively, uh, we're, we're, we're plenty good enough to stop the run. Plenty good enough. Uh, we've got the right bodies. We've got just enough depth. Uh, the scheme is right for them, and uh, yet we find ourselves uh, on money downs, uh, not allowing the offense to convert way, way too many times. I, I don't know what their third down conversion rate is. I'm sure it was pretty darn high. Third down, seven for 15, way, way too high. Are you, are you at, at this point, you've, you've kind of had to, since you've been here, to juggle coaching and promoting on, on some level. It seems like this, is, this game has the potential to be a pretty, pretty big setback for trying to... Uh, to get people interested and to get people behind the, the team? Well, you know, the, the, the bandwagon's been fairly light anyway, so uh, if a couple more jump off, that's, that's, that's their call. All I know is this. We are, we are a better football team. Uh, 
again, I don't care who we were playing. It, it, it's, we're, we're a better football team than we've been. Uh, we're playing hard. Uh, don't always play smart, but we're playing hard. And uh, I, I really believe the fruits of our labors are going to show. Uh, we still, we're still playing an awful lot of young guys. That's not an excuse. That's just the reality. And the young guys make the bulk of the mistakes. If I, you know, if you, if you, you know, that's just the way it is. A lot of people thought that UMass left teams like Maine behind when they upgraded. So what does a loss to a team like Maine do? Listen, every every loss just is 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 to me is just uh, <laughs> shattering. Um, and obviously, we didn't leave Maine behind. If nothing else, we probably incented Maine to come out and play a great game because right now the gap is there is no gap. Uh, between us and them, so they had they had a chance to win. You know, in three or four years, when we have uh, our program develops, uh, when we got the right guys in there, and um, should be a different story. Can't promise you that, but should be a different story. But uh, today, I just want to talk about you know today is Maine's day. It's you know four years from now is irrelevant. That's just uh, hypotheticals. The reality of it is that there is no there is no gap between us and Maine. It was, you know, uh, could have, would have, should have been a, a, a very close game. Um, and uh, it wasn't as close as I uh, thought it to be. But I talked to our guys, you know, we talked about two minute being such a vital part of our game plan because we knew it was going to be close. The, the talent cap's just not there. Probably our younger guys are, are super, or got plenty of talent, but they're younger guys. I mean, again, we played more red, red shirt freshmen today, even more, more got to see action. And next week there'll be even more, until finally almost all, excuse me, I said Richard, two freshmen, and by the end of uh, by the end of the season probably 18 to 20, we'll all have seen action, just like last year. What did you say to Mike at, at the half? And are those conversations the same as they were at the end of last season? Uh, meaning, uh, it'll be like, uh, how does he handle still? He handles you? stuff very well. Uh, he's a he's a pretty resilient young man. Uh, he's a competitor, ex extremely competitive. And, uh, I, you know, anytime you change the quarterback, it feels like you're putting the blame on him, and that's not what I wanted to do. But we definitely needed, needed a spark. It would have been no different if I had two tight ends or two receivers. You know, we, we, we have a couple of receivers that are close. They all got more or less equal playing time. Uh, and uh, some, some of the defensive positions, we, guys are very close, more or less equal playing time. And uh, I just felt that with us not showing enough offensively, uh, the gap between the two was, was so was so thin right now that uh, AJ deserved a chance to go in there. The team just needed a boost, and I was uh, trying to find. Them. You mentioned that this this week the two of them will com compete again. Does that happen in a lot of positions after a game like this? Well, it, it, you know, it, it should happen at a lot of positions in, in, in any good program where you have enough guys that nobody's guaranteed their position that they've got to compete day in and day out for it. And uh, I'd like to think that we have competitive guys. The guys who go out there and start every Saturday are those guys who have earned the job through their play and through their work during the course of the week. And, uh, you know, it's not going to boil down to uh, who has the best percentage in seven on seven. That's not it. It's more the body of work through the course of the week. Uh, who's more comfortable with the game plan? Who's more consistent? Uh, those are the things that you can see as a coach. But I can tell you this, they're both, they're both, I mean, I've been around both guys for a long time now. They're both very equal at the end of the day from a productivity standpoint. There's not, ne neither one is significantly better than the other. Very few scrimmages have we had where one has been significantly better than the other. So at the end of the day, it's just, it's just going to be more of a gut feeling, and uh, we'll see where we go. Defensively, you, was it, they had a lot of open receivers, and sometimes very open. Is it was it something that schematically that they that they had that, that they drew up that created that, or were you guys in the wrong place? Well, I, I think they had uh, they saw some things that other teams uh, exploited us with, and they were able to do it. And some of the some of the some of the plays were a little bit unconventional early on, and uh, they caught us uh, things that you don't see week in and week out. You only see a couple times a year, and uh, I saw the one coming, the, like the little throwback to the tight end. And, you know you. You, you, you preach your guys, you know, stay at home and uh, read your keys, but guys see flow go one way and they chase it and then they, they come back the other way and the guy's wide open makes a huge play. Then, you know, their tight end had a couple couple nice catches, went up and uh, top shelf the ball over our guy and, um, 
those those things all add up. Those things all add, add up to a win for a team. And they were able to make those plays that we weren't able to make. Didn't even we didn't even come close to making some of those. Is it a balancing act between trying to let guys know that certain things that they did weren't acceptable versus trying to get these guys confidence going forward? Well, it, it's it's always that way. But here's the reality: you you can't can't ask a guy, uh, you can't beat a guy over the head because he didn't do something he's not physically capable of doing. It's our job to try to get guys in positions that they're not so over, overly matched or, and asking them to do things they can't do. Uh, there was nobody on the field uh, that was overmatched or overwhelmed, I can tell you that. It was just a matter of uh, probably fundamentals uh, at the end of the day. You know, we, we just didn't play with them during the game. Really discouraging, you know. This is, this is the uh, last thing I wanted to do was come here and sit here under these circumstances today. And uh, like I said, I knew it was going to be close. I preached it to the guys, and um, the reality of it was uh, it was uh, you know just a, a tougher game than I wanted it to be. You know, uh, you, you see he had a career day, but he's only had a short career, so uh, it's all relative. Um, don't We don't have necessarily a number one receiver. I mean, it doesn't work that way. Uh, they all have they all have chances to catch the ball, uh, but I would say this: after today, uh, if I was a quarterback, I'd have a lot more confidence in him and maybe uh, stay with him a moment longer, or put the ball there and let him go make a play because he certainly did that today. He would have had it. I mean, there's no doubt he would have had a touchdown on that one play at the end there, and AJ over uh, had it just over you know overthrow. I mean, by five yards. I, I, I don't know. Did some of the disappointment from Wisconsin. No, we, you know, we had two starters out on offense, and that made a, I think that caught up to us uh, a little bit. It caught us, it caught up to us in practice, trying to get the right guys in there. Uh, uh, Shakur, obviously being out, uh, wasn't quite as easy to replace as you, as you would think it would be, and because uh, we had to move guys around, and then Ricardo uh, Miller uh, uh, couldn't go. So uh, that you know, when you take two guys out of your mix that were starters. Uh, it, it, it throws you off, and we're hoping to get one of them back. We're hoping Ricardo, uh, so we couldn't wholesale the game plan one way, uh, as if we weren't going to have him. You know, we, we, we then at towards and then when Wednesday came and went, then we knew we just I wasn't gonna we weren't going to use him. We had to go forward. So uh, when you don't have a lot of experience, and then you just give two guys seventy odd plays against Wisconsin to get them ready for the next game, which gets them ready for the next game. You take those two guys out of the mix, and and, and uh, then we got EJ Burston, who ends up uh, starting today, and EJ didn't even travel last week, you know. So now his first college game, he's uh, he's running out there with the starting group. So those are the issues that I've got to deal with, and uh, those are uh, those are just that, that's just the lay of the land. Would you say the folks that are on the bandwagon that see in the bottom scroll that UMass lost to Maine about the progression of the program? Well, I think the people that are firmly in the bandwagon understand that uh, this wasn't going to be easy. I, I, you know, I, when I say that, I, I, I wish it was easier. I certainly do. Could we have played better? Could we have coached better today? Absolutely. <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's a jillion things we could have done differently. It's easy to, it's easy to say that after a loss. You know, uh, I mean, it was in, we're in the first half, and I'm going through my own mental checklist of things that. I need to do this week, you know. I need to do this on Sunday. I need to do this on Monday. You can't help it as a coach. Um, it's just the way we're, we're wired. But for the people on the bandwagon, people who've been following our program, they know uh, they know the uh, the strengths and weaknesses of, of our program, where we're at, where we're going, uh, what we're trying to build this thing with, and uh, it's uh, it's it's not going to be an easy ride this year. You know, it's uh, I think it's going to get better, but it's not going to be easy. We're going to have we're going to have some peaks and we're going to have some valleys, not only in games, but even within the games. It's just going to be that way until we can get a mature football team out there. You know, I've, I've pretty well have insulated myself from that because if, if I took that, if I took every game as an indictment, uh, I would probably uh, have a hard time getting out of bed in the morning, you know. So I just, uh, I, I know that there's going to be people uh, out there, you know, Maybe for the first time I had, really, probably the first time I really had it, somebody when I was walking off the field just, just blistering me, you know, coming off, and he's, he's entitled to it, you know. He's disappointed, and gosh darn so am I.
It doesn't matter who you're playing on any given day. Uh, Maine's a good football team. Uh, they came out and played today. Good for them. Uh, we just need production on both sides, and I don't think we have it today. Um, it, it, it's not discouraging. Um, we don't have our heads down. We're definitely, uh, we're definitely going to move uh, forward. We have a positive mindset on it, and it. So, uh, what, like I said, we just got to take it day by day and just go about it and just take it, put it aside, and just keep going forward. How do you use it? What do you mean by just how do you build off of what do you, what do you you get angry and try to build off of it? Do you just um, forget about it and try to build off of it? What's I mean, I don't think you can ever get angry off of a game. Um, you know, you just got to go back, watch the film, take the positives out, um, work on the negatives, and just get better better for the next week. You know, we got to focus now on Kansas State and going down there and beating them. How, how do you feel about how you play? Uh, obviously, I could have done a lot better. You know, um, you know, I didn't complete all my passes. Um, you know, I didn't make the right protection checks all the time. And obviously, I only put up seven points when I was out there. So obviously, there's a lot, a lot that I can improve on. How much more difficult is it to come in and play with a lot of younger guys or somebody making the first start? A lot of guys maybe you don't have this, the kind of rapport or both in practice. I mean, there's sometimes it's difficult. Other guys, you know, being around Tajay Bernard for a year now, you know, that's that's nothing. Um, Beck, Derek Beck, being around him, same thing. And then, um, you know, I've been working with those guys in practice. So, you know, if they were out there starting or they're going out there with me, you know, when I go in, then it's just it's like every other day, you know. So, I mean, obviously there's some throws that I wish I had back, you know, because I just haven't worked with some of those guys as much. But at the same time, i got to complete those passes. Charlie's mentioned that he's, his plan is to get you in games as often as he can. Was it different coming in at halftime as opposed to coming in the fourth quarter or something like that? It definitely is. It definitely is. Um, you know, I was told at halftime that I would be starting in the second half. So, I mean, I got a little bit of time to prepare for that as opposed to, you know, Coach Molnar saying, all right, you know, just be ready at any time. And then, you know, in 10 seconds it goes, okay, you're in and I'm in. So, I mean, mentally it's, it's a lot easier. But at the same time, I have to be ready no matter what, you know, when my number's called from starting or if I go in, you know, after the first play of the game or the last play of the game, I have to be ready. Coach said that uh, this week would be a uh, would you kind of reopen the competition at quarterback. Is that something you look at like this is an opportunity for you to take a step forward? I mean, every week I look at it as, to, as an opportunity to take a step forward. You know, no matter when I get in the game, I just try and do what I can do, play within myself, you know, complete passes, move the offense, and try to put up points.